parang wag kang i- wag kang iiling-iling. Yeah, there, that, no, 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 no. I, I don't like that. Wag kang iiling-iling. Para bang pinagtatawanan mo kami rito. That, don't that do that. Throw, no, don't yeah. don't ever do that, please. You're being disrespectful. Para bang don't do that. Baka gusto mo ikaw ang tatanong-tanong didiinin ko rito. Use let me no, 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 let me explain. Tapos na yung explanation. The, the yung she explained on, on your why, behalf. Ako yeah. naman, ako naman. Kasi nga, Yusek, uh, for me, logic tells us na kung itong hybrid nag yield ng more production, double ng inbred, almost double. In fact, ito nga si Danilo Bolos ng Nueva Ecija, eh, nakakapag-produce siya using the hybrid program, 15 metric tons per hectare. Yung Sengenta... La Pioneer SL variety, it can produce 10 metric tons per hectare or more versus sa inbred na 5, 4 to 5 lang. So if we're after high yield para mas malami tayong production, mas malami tayong harvest, edi eh dapat mag-concentrate sa hybrid. That is correct, uh, At, Senator right? Tolvo. O bakit pa na, meron pati itong, ano itong inbred program na gumagastos we, tayo ng bilyones dito? We have 4.8 Kasi mas maganda, gumagastos na lang tayo ng bilyones sa hybrid para mas lalong dumami ang ating rice production. We, we agree with you, Senator Tolvo. We Thank have, you. We have 4.8 million hectares and the target now is 1.9 million hectares will be for hybrid because we have to gradually increase and our focus also is a uh, to maximize uh, yield during the dry season where the hybrid performs very well. The, the yields that you were mentioning were actually during the dry season. And during the wet season, we try to maximize the use of inbred. Because as of now, our inbred can adapt much better during the wet season where there is a lot of pests and diseases. But there are also hybrids now that are coming up that are also good during the, during the uh, wet season. But nevertheless, Hindi, there, kasi, there are there are studies na yung hybrid is adaptable sa weather na pagdating uh, sa mga ulan. Ta, that, is, that, can, is, that is also true, uh, Senator Tolbo. Hindi, there, wag kang, wag kang iiling-iling. Yeah, there, that, no, 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 I, I don't like that. Wag kang iiling-iling. Para bang pinagtatawala mo kami rito. That, don't that do that. Throw, don't, don't, yeah. don't ever do that, please. You're being disrespectful. Para bang don't do that. Baka gusto mo, ikaw ang tatanong-tanong, didiinin ko rito. No, I'm not. I'm serious. This is serious matter. We're talking about kapakanan ng mga farmers dito and yet tatawa-tawa ka pa. Don't. Natiwala na ang pinag-usapan dito and you're still laughing. Hindi na masagot-sagot ang mga kasama mo and you're still laughing. Don't do that, you sex zumbilya. Thank you. Can I continue, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. So in our strategy, we are combining these uh, two, inbred and hybrid, but as of now, most of the areas are still uh, using inbred because we have also to ad adapt our farmers. There, uh, we started promoting hybrid in 2000, uh, year 2000, uh, Senator, Mr. Senator. And it was difficult for farmers to adapt because of, as uh, this, uh, the chair said, the cost requirement is sometimes higher because they have to use more uh, fertilizer. And the, our farmers do not, have, do not always have that uh, resource to invest in hybrid. So gradually, there are more and more farmers going into hybrid. That's why in last, uh, this year, our target is 1.5 billion. Yeah, yan ibig sabihin. Mag-invest kayo sa hybrid we are program. Dahan-dahan na kayo umalis sa inbred. That's correct. Because kunti lang yield ng inbred eh. Am I making sense? So alisin nyo na itong inbred. If you're an accountant, uh, ang inbred seed is 38 pesos per kilo. Ang hybrid seedlings is 250 pesos per kilo. 38 over 250, it's uh, ilang percent lower yun, di ba? So, uh, minamaximize din natin yung pera natin. Plus tong hybrid, to produce that amount, you have to invest a lot of inputs na which the poor farmers cannot afford. So, bibigyan mo sila ng hybrid but they cannot afford the Kaya nga nandiyan po yung gobyerno. Perform well yung hybrid. Pero, kaya... Eh, parang yung hybrid is for yung kaya nila yon. Yes. The inbred is para dun sa wala naman silang masyadong amount for inputs. Diba? 
Kaya kami, kinukombine namin. Parang uh, there are 42 provinces na gumagamit ng hybrid, uh, ng inbred, and 15 provinces na gumagamit ng hybrid. In fact, I would suggest if I would be asked that those with uh, money and large farms and they can afford to buy hybrid, they buy hybrid. Oh, that's okay. Pero kanina, for those who are poor, cannot afford the, the hybrid seeds and the inputs, then it's okay kasi six metric tons is not so bad because ang ating ngayong production is four metric tons per hectare, di ba? Pag naging six yan, that means it increased by... Uh, 4 over 6 is 40 divided by 6. 60%. More than 60%. Ang shortage lang natin sa rice is 15%. So if we increase by 60%, we are self-sufficient in, in rice and we can export. So 6 metric tons per hectare is not so bad. In fact, that was the... I was talking to, to Senior Yusek Domingo Panginiban and I was asking him what is ba yung yung ano nyo noon sa ano yung program nyo ke uh, yung araw na mag, masagana 99 your target is 6 metric tons per hectare that you were not able to achieve diba so we are trying to achieve that so, thank you anyway as, uh, senator pag tayo naka 6 metric tons per hectare self sufficient na tayo sa rice and we can export uh, right now, tayo po'y nag-import pa rin, number one importer tayo. But anyway, maganda po yung sagot nyo kanina na naandahan, kayo po ay pupunta na doon sa, uh, uh, sa hybrid program going towards that direction. Kasi nga naman, eh, mas mataas ang yield. So bakit tayo pupunta doon sa mababa lang yield, pwede naman pula doon sa mataas na yield, pwede naman natin budgetan para ma maging affordable na itong hybrid program sa ating mga farmers subsidized ng gobyerno. That's Tama. correct, uh, Mr. Senator, Madam okay. Chair. Uh, this year, it's 1.6 billion. Tulfo, there is a chismis that the, the hybrid seedlings we are importing is the reject from other countries. That's why nagtataka ako, bakit may nagre-reklamo na ayaw tumubo yung hybrid seedlings? So, depende eh, din sa... Dapat yung nag-import ng depende, ano, depende reject. Depende sa quality of the hybrid seedlings. Kung... Maganda quality, maganda ang performance. Pag pangit ang so, quality, pangit din. So kayo ba yung nag-import ng reject ng mga seedlings yung sinasabi ni Senadora? Uh, the, it's Dapat the private sector kung, that is importing. Well, then go after those private sector, whoever they yes. are. That's why uh, uh, yung balita. Our, our program is now promoting local production of even hybrid. Research. Mas maganda talaga yung hybrid, yeah. right? Okay. Now, but anyway, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Senator, our target this year is 1.6 billion hectares. Next year is 1.9. And then the following year, if you will give us more budget. Using hybrid yes, program. Yes. Good. Anong nangyari sa ating mga farm school? Ilan ang farm school meron tayo? Kasi sa ngayon, it's a dying uh, profession sa itong farming. Wala nang gusto mag maging farmer. And so, meron tayong tinatawag na farm school, right? Si, si Director Rico Terro will answer yeah. it. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Tolfo, sir. Um, farm school is uh, with TESDA. Uh, learning site for agriculture is with ATI. And there are about 1,700 plus uh, accredited by Agricultural Training Institute as learning site for agriculture. And then TESDA, accredit them as farm school in which uh, they provide a scholarship program for the rice farmer, sir. Okay. Ilan po ang mga nag-benefit dito? Ilan po yung mga graduates since uh, ito po ay inumpisahan itong project na ito? Ilan po yung scholars? At magkano po yung nasubsidize ng TESDA para sa mga scholars ng farm school? At uh, Nasaan na po itong mga graduates sa farm school na ito at uh, nagkaroon na ba ng uh, pagbabago sa rice production as a result of them going undergoing training pertaining to farming? Uh, Madam Chair, <clears throat> Senator Tulfo, sir. Uh, TESDA, under the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, uh, was given 700 million pesos 
uh, out of the 1 billion pesos or 10% of the uh, RCEP fund, uh, 10 billion from the rice tarification law, and uh, ATI, uh, out of that 1 billion, uh, we only are allocated 100 million. Uh, together with field rice and... No, Ma'am, sorry to interrupt. Ang tinatanong ko po, ilan po ang mga nag-graduate dito sa every year? And since it started, ilan na po ang nakapag-graduate dito? Magkano na po inaipondo ng uh, TESDA sa mga farm school na ito na ang beneficiary ay mga anak ng farmers, tama? At nasaan na po ito mga graduates na ito? Can you give us a list, a breakdown? Uh, yes. Uh, Kasi may mga balita raw po na wala naman talaga estudyante. Uh, I cannot speak in behalf of TESDA, Your Honor. Uh, but I can speak... Ah, hindi. For... Dapat nagmamonitor po kayo kasi program niyo po ito. Uh, yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. Hindi porket eh, pinasa niyo sa test at tatalikuran niyo na ito. Eh, yung budget na galing sa inyo eh, dapat minomonitor niyo to make sure na well spent yung budget na binibigay niyo sa test. Uh, yung, na to make sure na ito mga pinapadala niyong eskola sa farm school ay talaga nag-aaral at meron silang tututunan at nakatulong sa ating rice production. Uh, we'll provide you with uh, the list, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we'll, uh, together with the uh, Farmer Field School, it is the Farmer Field School that uh, TESDA is offering with... Uh, uh, Il ilan po ang nag-graduate dito taon-taon? Uh, from, from my list... Magkano po ang budget allocated dito para sa mga farm school na ito, ma'am? Um, TESDA has conducted a total of... Uh, Yung number of graduates. 207,059. Uh, 207,000. Yes. Nasaan po itong 27,000 ano to, graduates? Graduates po, sir. Okay, nasaan ito mga graduates na ito? Uh, na, pa, na nagagamit ba nila yung natutunan nila sa uh, farm school? Uh, it's all over the country, sir. Uh, I know, pero namomonitor niyo ba? Dapat meron kayong monitoring system to make sure na ito mga estudyante na graduate dyan ay talagang may natututunan. Kasi yes, kung hindi, then better uh, change yung mga curriculum doon, baka siguro kailangan dito po ng mga experts. Senator Tulfo, you know, uh, we did a study, the Philippine Institute of Development Study did a study of the comparison of the rice, production of rice in Vietnam and the production of rice in the Philippines. The, the, the cost of producing rice in Vietnam is 6 pesos per kilo of palay. The Philippines, it's 12 pesos per kilo of palay. So it's double. So the idea is uh, yung, yung proceeds from the uh, uh, tariff on imported rice, ibigay sa farmer para itaas ang yield nila maging competitive sa, farm, uh, sa Vietnamese you. farmer. Kasi sila pinakamababa eh. And then we, that's why we created the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Ngayon na, uh, based on the study, ang, ang, uh, ang uh, problem kaya mahal ang ating biga, palay kesa sa Vietnam is uh, uh, una, malahal ang labor natin by 350. Kasi ang difference is 6 pesos eh. 350 mahal ang labor natin. When your labor is high, then you have to mechanize. That's why we put 5 billion of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund to mechanization. And then, yung 250 daw is the low productivity of our farms, of our rice. So, seeds yun. Kaya that's why we decided, may na discovering in certified inbred seed and fill rice, yun ang dinidistribute natin para tumaas ang productivity. But, uh, this uh, this uh, mechanization and uh, seed productivity cannot be implemented without teaching the farmers. That's why we allocated one billion of the ten billion to training through the farm school. Oh, because pag uh, halimbawa ang mga farmer hindi binayaran ng test da yung tuition sa farm school hindi mag-aaral yun mahihirap yun walang ibabayad yun na tuition kaya test da now is paying the tuition of the farmers studying in the farm school in order for them 
to mechanize, mag-aral silang patakbuhin yung makina, and at the same time, uh, mag-aral sila to maintain. Kasi pag hindi na-maintain ang makina, useless din yung makina. And that is the complaint of uh, our friends from the local, uh, like the uh, governor of Pineda of uh, Pampanga, nakatunga nga do yung mga equipment kasi pag nasira, eh, hindi kayang gawin. Kasi kaya dapat tuturuan silang mag-maintain. And at the same time, these high inbred seedlings, kayang i-produce ng farmer in the future, tuturuan mo lang. Because the inbred seedlings na binibigay natin sa farmer, ang nagpo-produce ay mga farmer din. Yung uh, co-op of farmers. So, ini-empower mo na yung mga farmer that in the future, they can produce their own seeds and they can mechanize. Kasi po ako, naging bisita ako ng Association of Farm School in France. And they have thousands of farm school in France. Tayo sa Pilipinas, eh, agricultural country, nung ipasa ko po yung farm school, abay ang tanong sa akin, ma'am, ano ba yung farm school? At ako po po ay nagtayo ng farm school para sabihin ko sa kanila na Pumunta kayo do sa farm school ko, gayahin nyo kasi may farm school ako. And then, this mechanization, nung pumunta din ako sa France, I met a farm owner, may 100 hectares siyang wheat farm. And I asked him, uh, how many employees do you have? Sabi niya, I'm the only one. I'm fully mechanized. Imagine, 100 hectares, kayang pat iayos nung isang farmer dahil siya fully mechanized. So, Parang yun din ang dream ko sa Pilipinas na in the future, uh, ang mga farmer natin are all mechanized and then we can attract the young people to do farming because they don't have to plant with their hands. They just operate machine to farm in the Philippines. Kaya yun po ang an idea ko ng uh, farm school and I hope na... Uh, we will be successful. It will take time because it's hard to train people. But siguro in the future, five years from now, we can see a very good result. Sabi po ng Phil Rice, before we started this program, ang ating yield is 3.7 metric tons per hectare. Now it's 4.4. So medyo sabi nila by next year daw, baka kaya na nila ang five. So we're hoping kasi... At least there is hope because in, in 1995, we signed an agreement with WTO that we will liberalize the importation of rice. They gave us uh, from 1995 to 2018 to improve our competitiveness para maliberalize na natin ang importation of rice na ang rice farmer natin ay competitive na. But after 2018, walang nangyari. That's why we liberalized, but we gave all the proceeds of the tariff on rice to the small farmers para sila ay maging competitive. The, our, our dream is to make them competitive in the future. Yun lang po.